In this tutorial, you'll learn how to design a two-page spread in a magazine using InDesign CS 5.5 on a Mac. The first thing I like to do is create a projects folder so that all of my material that I'm going to be using is in that project folder. So I'm going to just create a folder on my desktop and on a Mac it's control click new folder. And I'm going to give this folder a name. I like to call things my last name and whatever slug for the project that makes sense. And inside this folder I'm going to go ahead and put my images folder, so this contains all the images I'm going to use, and my text document. And everything looks like it's in there, and I'll go ahead and close it. Now I'll open up Adobe InDesign, and it's in my Applications folder on my Mac. Go ahead and open it up here. And when you open it, you'll get this welcome screen, and this is what you do want to get. It basically is asking you, what do you want to open? Do you want to create a new document? Do you want to work on a project you've worked on previously, etc.? We're going to create a new document. So I'm going to click on New Document. We're going to work in print. It's going to be one page. But this time we're going to work in tabloid and we're going to work with the landscape mode. So it'll be two eight and a half by eleven pages next to each other. We want to work on a grid, so we want to work with columns. So our column grid will be six. You can leave the rest the same. This is saying it's a half inch margin, so three picas equals a half an inch, and the gutter is one pica, so all of this is good. And then hit OK. The first thing I like to do is save my document. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. I'm going to go to my desktop and to the folder, and I'll save it as an InDesign document here. And I usually call it the same thing as my Projects folder. One of the things I like to do when I'm working in magazine design is to put my folios down on the page. And I'll explain what that is. I'm going to use my magnifying glass here on the toolbar and zoom in to the corner of the page here. Now I'm going to use my T tool or type tool and I'm going to draw, click and drag, a box over in this right hand corner of the page. Notice I'm still in the margins of the page. Your folio is where you type in the name of your publication or magazine, also the date, and the page number. Whatever tool you choose here in the toolbar, whatever you're using, the control panel up here will change accordingly. So right now it knows I'm working with type. So I have two choices. Am I working with paragraphs or am I working with characters? So I can go in here and change the type style, the typeface, the point size, work with kerning and tracking, all on this control panel. Or I can actually work in the paragraph and control my alignment right here, do drop caps as well. So this is kind of a handy feature in InDesign. I like Minion Pro so I'm going to leave it, but one of the things I want to change is to make these a little bit different. So for example, I'm going to make the name of my magazine italic. And I'm going to make the date stand out a little bit more and I'll make that medium. And I'll go ahead and make my page number bold. And that way it's a little bit different. And I'll move that over to the edge of the page. So I'm going to Command minus and that lets me see the full page and if I do Command plus it brings it back a size. The next thing I do when starting a project is I look at sketches and so this sketch is one I did that is about the 2012 Oscar nominations. So there's nine nominees in the best picture category. So you see this big picture in the middle is the winner of this category and then you have the other four on each side, four on one side, four on the other. Now I'll go ahead and start putting my content on the page. I'm going to zoom in using my magnifying glass and I'm going to zoom in here in the top left corner. You can also use your hand tool to move around the page as well. You're going to mostly use your direct selection tool when you're selecting things on the page. The first thing I'm going to do is draw a picture box on my page using this rectangle frame tool. So I'm just going to click on this and click and hold and drag in this first leg here. And notice the control panel changes. It gives me an X, Y coordinate, width and height. I'm going to change this height to 7P. I've done this page before so I know what a good size is. And I leave it at 15P too. That's the width of the first leg of the page. The next thing I want to do is each picture needs a photo credit. So I'm just going to use my type tool here and write photo credit. And for this exercise, since it's just a demo, I'm going to write my name. I'm the one who shot this photo and I'll put AP on the end of it. So remember I can use 
the paragraph con on the control panel and I can make this right aligned. So that'll be for demo purposes. I'm going to put my name as a photo credit for each one. But really you want to make sure you put the photo credit appropriate to that photograph. The next thing I'm going to do is put the title of the movie. So I'm going to draw another text box, put title of movie. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Command A, I'll come over here to my control panel to the character, and I'm going to make this 20 point. Drag this up using the handles in my direct selection tool, and I'll draw another text box. This one will be for the producer's names. So I'll just write producer's names here. Another thing that publications like is they like strokes on picture frames. So I'm going to go ahead and use my direct selection tool and select the picture. And just like Illustrator, this is your fill and this is your stroke or your outline. So if I bring this to the foreground and I double click on it, I can actually choose a color for my stroke. And typically this is standard black. So I just did 0, 0, 0, 100 in my CMYK. And then I hit OK. So that, my, that way my stroke is black. I also want to change the width of the stroke as well so it's not really thick. So if I go to Window, Stroke, here's where I can change the width to any width I want. So obviously I don't want a really dark one. But a real nice one is 0.25. That's a hairline. Okay, So I'll just use this double arrow to get out of that. So now this has a nice uh, stroke on the outside of this photograph. So now I want to know where to put this content on my first column on my page. How far up do I go? So I'm going to scroll over here to the folio and using my ruler I'm going to drag down a guide rule and place it right under the folio. And if you don't see your ruler you can go to view show rulers. Now I can scroll back over here and if I look at the ruler to the left I can click and hold and drag a rule one pica down from the rule I just created. Now I can move my content up right to that next rule line. When I have my content in place and I'm pretty happy with it, I can make several copies of this to go down this first leg on my page. So if I draw an imaginary box and group this, object group, I can command C and command V and paste several copies of this on the page. So this kind of acts as a template for the other movies. So all I'm doing is Command C and Command V as in Victor and copying it on the page. But I'm going to go ahead and ungroup this. Some designers don't like to put pictures here when they're working with live copy. And if you're working on Oscar night, you may want to just put a, like a gray box here so you don't actually put a picture because you don't know who the winner is going to be. So they'll come over here in their fill and they'll just put it a color in here. So I'll just put the color black. And that denotes that there's a picture that goes there. So I'll ungroup this next item here. So all I did was ungroup it. And I'll select this picture box. And I can even use my eyedrop tool and eyedrop that color in that first box. And I can go down the page and do the same thing. I'll just ungroup these and use my eyedrop tool to add a color to that third box. I'm not a big fan of that method, although I can see the practicality of it. I like to go ahead and put the photographs in because I'm really only enlarging one for the winner, so I have all the pictures sized and ready to go. So I went ahead and undid everything I did, just hitting Command Z several times to undo. So I'm going to go back to this first one. I'm going to start bringing in my content. So I want to make sure that this is ungrouped. And I'll go ahead and go into my Projects folder, and I have a text document called Oscar List. And I highly recommend if you're working with names and you don't, you're don't, you worried about misspelling, you copy and paste the material into your InDesign document. So I think the artist is going to win, so I'm going to hold off on writing that one. That's going to be my middle one. And I'm going to go ahead and put the titles of the movie in the spot that I allocated for that. And look here, I'm just copying and pasting, Command-C and Command-V, and it'll pick up the way I've stylized it in InDesign. Now if you get this red box, it means there's an overset, so you just need to use the handle and drag it down. I also don't like breaks in names, so I'm just going to break Jim Taylor's name over a tad. Okay, So you want to do this for each one of these. Just go in, copy over the name of the movie, and 
the producers. And if you're having trouble copying and pasting, you may want to ungroup this. It makes things a little bit easier. So again, this is overset, and I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. Before I go any further with adding my content, I want to go ahead and make several copies of this on my page. So I'm going to go ahead and sweep over it as an imaginary box using my direct selection tool and Command C and Command V, and this allows me to paste several copies of it. I'm also going to do this on the other side as well, because remember, my sketch showed four movies on one side and four movies on the other. So I can come over here and start putting these on the other side as well. So this acts as a template for my page. Now I can go in and finish putting in my content. So go ahead and do that. Go ahead and fill in the movies for those eight, not the winner, on your page. Now that I have all the written content on my page, all I'm left with is the photographs. But before I do that, I really want to make sure these pictures and the type are aligned with each other. I just kind of randomly put them on the page. So to do that, there are several ways. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so I can see what I'm doing here. And one way you can do this is you can draw an imaginary box over one of the items and bring your box so it lines up perfectly with the box above it. Then you can use your shift down arrow several times, so I just did two times, and that allows you to do two spaces, and you can do that for every one. You can go in here, so I can do this next one. I can align up my Hugo photograph box on that text box and do two shift arrows, and I know that I have the same amount of spacing here as I do there. So you can actually use your arrow keys to do spacing evenly. Another method that designers do is they'll draw an actual shape. So I drew a little square here using my shape tool. I'm going to go ahead and give it a fill. I'll give it some obnoxious color so that I know what it is. These are called spacers. So I can go up here to my control panel and do 1P, 1P for my height and width, hit enter. And I can use these spacers actually in between items. So 1P is 1 pica, and I know that I can come in here and add one pica a space. I can just make several copies of these little spacers if I want, or use the same one. But I just want to make sure I take these off the page before I print. So I have the same amount of space between each one. And I do. Now I can use my guide rules. I'm going to zoom out of the page and make sure the pictures on the right are at the same height as the picture on the left. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on my pictures on the right here and make sure it starts off in the right position. So I'm going to use my magnifying glass and bring this one up to that hairline right there using my arrow keys. Now I'll zoom out a little bit and using my guide rules I'm just going to draw a guide from the ruler so it matches up with the picture on the left and the picture on the right. So I want to make sure that all of these on the right align perfectly with the pictures on the left. Again, I'm just using guide rules from the ruler and I'm just bringing up my content a little bit. I was really off on this right hand column. There. Now they're all even. Next thing I want to do is I want to give my page a headline. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and create a text box that goes across four columns of my page. And I'm going to give this a headline. I'm going to go ahead and bump it up to 78 point. And I'm going to put the words, best in film, the artist. I'm also going to put a subhead on this page. And so I'm just going to draw another headline box. And usually this is half the size of the main headline. So I'm going to make this one, let's say, 38. And I'll just go ahead and type in a fake subhead. And I need to bump that down a little bit. I'll bump it down to 36. And of course, I would change this headline depending on the outcome of the Oscars. So here's our page. In the next tutorial, you'll learn how to start bringing in your photographs for the page and really make your page come alive. So look for that in part two.